All right, our next inductee into the CU Athletics Hall of Honor from basketball 1999 to 2003, Kate Fagan. Kate lettered four times under Coach Seelberry and turned into one of the premier three-point specialists and deadliest free-throw shooters in the nation. After playing two seasons with the Colorado Chill of the National Women's Basketball League, she began her professional career as a sports editor for the Ellensburg Washington Daily Record. Two stops later, as she moved on and started working her way up the ladder, she moved on to Philadelphia, where she worked for the Inquirer. She covered the NBA 76ers for three seasons and then moved on to ESPN. She'd become a top journalist in both print and then for ESPN in addition to authoring four books. She spent seven years as a columnist and feature writer for ESPNW, ESPN.com, and ESPN the Magazine, and was also a regular panelist on ESPN's Around the Horn and Outside the Lines. She is currently co-host of the national podcast, Off the Looking Glass. And if I'm not mistaken, she can correct me, I'm pretty sure Neil Welk gave her her first job in print. Is that true? Into the Boulder Daily camera? I thought Neil had told me that, so she started right here along with being a great student athlete. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Kate Fagan. Hi, everybody. Um, big thank you to Kimberly for putting this on and for all of you for making time and for Colorado for, for doing this. Um, I have at my table here, well, there's nine other people, but there's five women who are incredibly important to me, and I am going to share a little story about four of them. So it's like a Hunger Games over there, trying to figure out who I'm not gonna talk about. But no, I'm not gonna talk about one of them because it's my best friend, Shauna, and I met her after Colorado. So I'm very happy she's here tonight. But the other four have just been absolutely crucial to my life. Um, the first one is Chris Livingston, who I know so many of you in this room know. Um, when I was at Colorado, Chris was our director of basketball operations. And I have a thousand stories about Chris, but the one that I always think about and that changed my life was when I was struggling to figure out who I was and I was coming out. We were on a road trip at Nebraska. That's right, Chris, right? Okay. And um, we were staying at the, the Cornhusker Hotel. I'm sorry to mention Nebraska here tonight, but it has to happen. Um, and I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I had no clue about how to move forward. And I asked her if she would just make an hour of time and go up to this little loft they had and talk to me. And it was the most, one of the most important conversations I ever had. And she made me feel like there was a future and that it was going, you know, it was going to be okay. And. Chris and I still get coffee every time I'm back in town and stay in touch. And it is incredibly meaningful to me that she's here tonight. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be able to be the person I am with like a wife and a puppy and a life that I love if it wasn't for so many of these pivotal moments. Um, Kristen Payne is here and she was our trainer at Colorado. And Kristen and I had a book club when I was playing. And that was really crucial to me because as so many athletes here know, you can get lost in your identity about who you are and it can be so incredibly focused on, on field or on court. And Kristen really saw me as a full, well-rounded person and we would talk about books on the road and she knows how incredibly valuable she is to me, even to this day, about the really important things she did for me when I was struggling with mental health, when I wanted to leave basketball, she was right there to make sure I got the help I needed and that I ended up making the right decision, whatever that was for me. Syl Barry, who even, uh, I'm staying with Coach Barry while I'm here, and I was talking um, to her wife, Liz, and I was like, Coach Barry, and she was like, you can call her Seal. And so I'm trying it out tonight. So Seal Barry is here tonight, Seal. I think it sounds good. Um, I can't believe that I get to be friends with Coach Barry. Um, like I get to say, it's like a childhood dream that she would have me stay over at her house and I'm playing with her dog. It's just great because I have always just deeply admired who she is and how she moves through the world. And she knows this, but 
there's so many coaches out there, like when I was struggling and I was thinking about leaving basketball when I was here at Colorado, there'd be so many coaches who would kind of have that whole like, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality or like figure it out or get out. Like I'm here, I'm coaching and that's what we're doing. And when I was struggling, she, she actually listened to me. She actually listened and she actually said like, give me a couple weeks, I will coach you differently. And she actually did coach me differently, like right away. And us athletes, you know, like if you're not being coached in the way, if you don't respond to negative feedback, although I'm not sure anyone responds to negative feedback, but if you're not responding to certain things and a coach actually listens and gives you what you need, it's incredible. And I, I really do believe I would have left basketball if Seal hadn't really made that change. And wow, I have 30 seconds left and I left my mom for last. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over by about 30 seconds here. But um, since my dad was the basketball player and he played semi-pro, I often ended up like really crediting playing basketball and, and Colorado and, and sports with him. And it was only in the last few years that I realized like, my mom is like the core of everything that I am and who I do. And sometimes I never talked about it because I just thought she knew because we've always had this like indelible connection. Whereas me and my dad, I felt like I needed to praise him. Like I wanted that. Whereas my mom and I, and, and she knows this, like we're just cut from the same cloth. Like we, we love all of the same things. We have the same wanderlust. And I will end on that idea of wanderlust because the only reason I came to Colorado was because she was, she was the one who was, my dad would have wanted me to play in the backyard for college, right? He would have been like, we'll just, we'll get it, we'll get it NCAA verified. Whereas like my mom was like, go as far as you can, go to someplace beautiful, go to someplace different. She was the one who came with me on my recruiting visit. And I know if my dad had been there, he would have been like, I don't know, those mountains are okay. But my mom was like, this place is stunning. If I were you, I would go here. And it was like that stamp of approval that made me believe I could go far out west and come to a place like Colorado. So mom, I love you. And thanks again to everybody here and go Buffs.